All right, everyone, I got a real special tree to show you guys today. This tree is called Smith. And uh, I've done a video this year and last year on this um, this tree. But I figured I'd, I'd make a separate um, video just for Smith because it's that good. Um, you can see down in here on this particular fig, there's honey that's been dripping out of the eye so much so that it's on the leaf below it. Um, it's got a really pretty color this time of year. You know, this is kind of what you want. You want that purplish, you want a darker color on your Smith. Um, you know, that's, that's definitely um, not too important, but it's signs that your fig is ripened at a pretty high quality. And of course you want to see the honey at the eye. You don't have to wait too long to pick this fig in terms of when it starts to swell and when it doesn't. We also have one down here that's softer, more ripe. It's got better color to it, a little bit more cracking. So uh, when they really get like this, uh, this more intense like this, uh, they're really good. But at the same time, before they get like that and they just get the right color, they get soft. Um, that's all that really is necessary for this variety. But we broke off a leaf here. It's very typical of the leaf pattern to have these long fingers here. And I think that is, there's a big debate out there as to whether or not there's two different versions of Smith. You know, mine's from Just Fruits and Exotics, which has these longer fingers. And it's always had these longer fingers. But I'm sure that this tree with different amount of vigor could show a different leaf pattern. So I don't really go off the leaf pattern all that much, but um, this is definitely um, Smith, judging by this leaf pattern here. Um, it's also an early fig for the most part. You know, it ripens here without a head start. Uh, it's quite productive, but uh, my tree has been um, taking a few hits over the years when I air layered it off the large 25 gallon brown turkey rootstock that I had you know this is that tree right here this is that brown turkey rootstock that we then grafted another variety called Socorro Black onto it uh, and then we air layered that off and this is the original graft of Smith that I put on right here and you can still see the lines believe it or not of where I put the cleft in the graft this was about two years ago yeah this is two years ago so this is one of the first videos I showed you guys um, and you can see how thick this trunk is and how much this thing has grown and now I have four air layers on it um, it is quite a vigorous grower it seems like um, all these air layers have pretty damn good roots on them because I want five trees of this this variety this variety is that good uh, you know, like I said, it's early to mid-season, doesn't need a head start here. It's not very hardy, so for those of you wanting to put this in the ground, <laughs> excuse me, probably a bad idea. Um, moderately to quite vigorous, and uh, it resists rain pretty well, it resists splitting pretty well. Uh, overall, it's a really, really good fig for someone in the south, the east coast, Pacific Northwest. Uh, I've heard reports of people in California that love it, and I've heard you know, reports of people in California that think it's really not that great. Um, it's definitely more of a cooler seasoned, humid um, environment fig. So here is the fig itself, guys. with the leaf pattern. We also have a whole plate of figs over here that uh, I picked today. It's about to rain sometime tomorrow and we're gonna get heavy amounts of rain so it's good to pick your figs before the rain. Note the honey at the eye. And let me put you guys down and we'll cut this open. Uh, this fig is um, a nine out of 10 for me. It's one of the best tasting figs that I own uh, thus far. 
I've only given out a rating of nine to five different varieties so far this year. Smith is one, Italian 258, Azores Dark, Col de Dame Blanc, and uh, White Triana. So you can see in here just how beautiful this, this fig is. It has a very uh, smooth finish to the taste that lingers on your mouth. Immediately you get hit with some berry uh, intensity that's still a bit smooth, but it um, is very sharp, if that makes any sense. It's like a sharp acidity on your tongue, and uh, it's very sweet because there's some honey in there, <clears throat> but not overly sweet. And then it gets finished off by uh, a smooth, lingering, almost wine-like berry taste to it. Man, oh man, is that fig good. It really is a top variety. Um, without a doubt. You know, it, it tastes... Um, you know, is it is it insanely better than other figs? Like, the majority of the 8s that I've given? Because this is a 9 out of 10. Is it insanely better? Is it so much better that um, you have to get it? Well, I think you should get it, if you can. But I don't think it's so much better than, say, some of these other figs over here. You know, this is an 8. Raspberry Latte here is an 8. Azores Dark, these are all pretty much 9s. You know, uh, LSU Champagne's an 8, but <clears throat> I think Smith is marginally better than LSU Champagne because that's a honey fig, and I'm not a huge fan of the honey figs, but... You can tell that uh, this one has an edge over the eights. Like it's a clear, clear advantage, clear edge. But for the most part, it's only really a little better. You know, there's a little extra taste. There's a weird flavor in this fig that is sort of indescribable. Let me eat the one that's a little less ripe. It's just really good, guys. Anyway, that is Smith. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, really, a really top-notch fig variety. So I'll talk to you all later. Take care.